Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. We're having a festival, just in case you didn't know. You all know very well. I shouldn't be sarcastic. Festival means many people come together with the aim of conjointly doing something enjoyable. To, or to celebrate something. There are celebrations, there are commemorations. People can get together to commemorate the Holocaust or something. But that's not a festival. Festival specifically means enjoyment, pleasure. Here you go every year to the Juneteenth festival. That's not only in Atlanta, that's throughout the United States, is it? It's, it's the biggest is in uh, Atlanta. What are they celebrating? Black people getting freed. Black culture. Celebrating being black. Okay. What's the biggest festival in America every year? July the 4th in Washington, D.C., is it? And they shoot off some fireworks. I guess people get drunk, that's what, is it? That's the normal way of celebrating festivals in this civilized part of the world. <coughs> Probably the biggest festival every year in Europe is the beer festival in Munich. And people come from different, even from America, to, to celebrate. I mean, you can drink beer anywhere, anytime, pretty much, but they all go together to drink beer. And they think beer is important. That's why they come together to celebrate. The most famous festival in America, probably, and at least in our generation, was the Woodstock Festival. Which year was that? 67? No, before then. I don't know. Look it up on the internet. 69, yeah, yeah. Like that. Big, big festival. And it still goes on in, in the name is uh, the name is lent to various festivals. <coughs> still going on in Poland every year. Uh, we, we happen to know there's a Woodstock festival because of Indra Jumna Swami and his team's presence there. So what are they celebrating in Woodstock? Uh, hippiness, I guess. Let's all get together and be happy and not so much drunkenness, but other kinds of intoxication. Celebration of being a hippie. Freedom. Freedom, freedom another illusory kind of freedom. They were hippies and then they all had to go and get jobs, right? <laughs> Eventually. There are religious festivals also. The uh, Christmas. Yeah. Thanksgiving in America. I never heard of it in England or Ireland. Thanksgiving. Bad news for turkeys. Uh, the eating meat is the, is the prime way to celebrate. And in Jewish culture, they have Passover and this and that. Religious festivals. Uh, in the meat-eating religions, they celebrate the festivals by more meat-eating because they think that will make them happy. They, they, they celebrate what is, they do what is very dear to them, what they think will give pleasure. There's a, there's a dog-eating festival, isn't there, in China? Let's see. Dog eating. People think that eating dogs, it's its something. You can eat dogs anywhere in China. I think you'd probably, you'd probably be an outrage if you did it here in America. <coughs> it, has it has happened. Chinese, Koreans, probably. If you shoot someone dead, it, it hardly gets in the news here in Atlanta. Every day they're shooting humans dead. But if you, if you kill a dog, that would be big news. <laughs> And if you eat it, yeah, phew. 
The dog eating festival. What about gay pride? That's also a festival, right? It's a big festival showing off we're, we're proud of being gays. Anyway, we're having a Sankirtan festival. That's what, that's what we come together for. We don't have there's so many things. And in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, festival means Sankirtan. Just like in, in the Mlecha culture, festival means eating meat and taking intoxication. And in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, festival means Sankirtan and commemoration also. Even, even the, just like you're saying, Holocaust commemoration, uh, we also have commemoration of the disappearance days of devotees, which the mood is somewhat somber, but it's still called a festival. And we have Kirtan. We have festival every day. <laughs> As I often note, these, these kind of festivals that we have, the devotees who are not living in a temple fest atmosphere, what we call congregational devotees, they usually appreciate much more because we do it every day. We, have, we come together, we have kirtan, dancing, prasadam. But those who don't have that, at least they may do it in their home, but they, <coughs> they don't have it in a group. Uh, so they, they appreciate more. And we also appreciate it, because the more the merrier, as the saying goes. Bringing together and having kirtan means sankirtan. That's one definition. And Srila Prabhupada stated that the more there are for kirtan, the more ecstatic it becomes. Sankirtan festival means non stop chanting, kirtaniya sada harihi. Hari is glorifiable, he's the one to be glorified. We learn from Chaitanya Bhagavat that Nityananda Prabhu and his associates had a three-month non-stop Sankirtan festival in Panihati. <laughs> you want to do that? You, you're just saying you want to do that? Okay, so no one goes home. You can all stay here. Extend your visa if you need. <laughs> that could be taken literally. They went on day and night, but I guess they... they uh, they stopped and took prasad and maybe some rest also. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't take rest. See, they would have kirtan all night, every night in Navadvip. Just, uh, we, sh we should do kirtan non-stop, actually. We, we have rules that you have to stop. Otherwise, you just go on. We, we, we used to have a problem with one of our ecstatic devotees in Salem, Chittahari, because could never once he started kirtan. There are other there are other things like devotees have to take prasadam and their classes. But now he's learned. But otherwise, he just go on and on and on and on, literally for hours. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, also we have uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu having ecstatic kirtan. They started after Mangalati, and usually he'd have a daily schedule. But this time they went for Mangalati in. Jagadath Mandir, and they were just chanting in complete bliss, and uh, the, the whole planet was shaking, and uh, <coughs> his teeth were all loose. Uh, and eventually, by midday, devotees were feeling tired, and but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just going on and on and on, and no one wanted to stop because he was in ecstasy. And uh, then Nityananda thought what to do, because uh, after all, uh, devotees have to take prasadam. So he stopped. Okay, you stop singing. You stop singing. Gradually, one by one. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Hare Krishna! And he just kind of realized there's no one else chanting. And he stopped. And Nityanan said, yeah, it's time to stop. <laughs> he could stop him. Lokanath Maharaj gave one incident that uh, once in New Vrindavan, he was leading Tulsi Arati Kirtan, and Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj was dancing so ecstatically, he didn't want to stop. So he only stopped at 7.15 when the, when the uh, deity curtains opened. No one chanted any japa that morning. <laughs> so yeah, we also, 
We also have our Sankirtan festival out on the streets, in the malls, How do you, malls, airports, universities. So there are different phases of the Sankirtan festival. So we, we chant Kirtan here, and then we go and take the Kirtan out to the people who need to get Sankirtan in the form of Srila Prabhupada's books. And we're honored to host Brigupati Prabhu, who's doing a non stop Sankirtan festival for the last 50 years. <laughs> and this is, this is the real stamp of approval, as far as we're all concerned. That if, if he, he's coming here regularly, he approves, okay. Now we, we know we're doing something right. <laughs> if he approves. And we learn from hearing from him and so many devotees here, all in a line, that this book distribution, it gives realization. You have to have some kind of realization to be able to do it, especially to do it on and on and on and on. But it gives realization also. Raja Vidya, this is the topmost knowledge. Raja Guhyam, it's the most secret knowledge and it's being distributed everywhere to everyone. Pavitram idam uttamam, it's the most pure knowledge. Pratyaksha vagamam dharmyam, it's, it's experienced. It's not just something theoretical in a book, but those who live by it, they experience it. And susukam kartam avyayam, susukam kartam avyayam could be rendered they have an eternal festival. They're, they just go on being happy forever. And we see that with book distribution. Another great hero or heroine of Sankirtan we have present here, Kamalini Mataji, who last year had a heart attack or something like that. And uh, you know, I want to take a hospital. No, why? What hospital? What do I need to go to a hospital for? I'm chanting Hare Krishna. I can go right now. And then by insistence, they took her to a hospital. And then you have to take all these medicines. You're not taking any medicine. When Krishna wants to take me, I'll go. That's all. Fully, fully sheltered in the lotus feet of Krishna. And you can only do book distribution day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Because you're fully sheltered in the lotus feet of Krishna. Isn't it? Must be. Must be. Otherwise, how can you do it? Whether, you, whether you're here or there, you're at the lotus feet of Krishna because that's the, that's the connection. By serving the Guru, you get his mercy. And Guru is connected to his Guru, connected to his Guru, connected to his Guru. And the, the mercy of Krishna comes down and then what do you do with it? You get, you get more than you can handle and you have to give it out. Kirtan comes naturally to those who are performing kirtan. It, it, it's, you want to share it. You read these books and you think, wow, this should be shared with others. So we're attracting great souls. That's, uh, that's the sign of authenticity. You're attracting devotees who are attracting the mercy of Krishna, attracting the mercy and giving it out. And the, the ocean expands, anandam buddhi vardhanam. Of course, the really great soul, the greatest of the great, those who we're informing everyone about are the gopis. And we're talking about going out on the streets and distributing books. What's that got to do with the gopis? We're supposed to be serving the gopis, right? Actually, you should have gone to Radha Kund. Did you read that from Radha Kund Mataji? That, yeah, she wanted to go to Radha Kund and then Prabhupada came in a dream and said, I'll, t I'll, t I'll take you to Radha Kund, distribute my books and give Radha Kund to everyone. That's, the gopis are the highest and what do they say? They say so many things, but famously, Tava katam ritam tapta jivanam kavibhiditam kalmashapaham shravanamangalam srimadatatam 
Bhuvi Grenanti e Bhurida Janaha. Srila Prabhupada's translation. The nectar of your words, they're addressing Krishna, even though he's not there. <laughs> uh, he's, he's there in their hearts. The nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in this material world. These narrations, transmitted by learned sages, eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon whoever hears them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power. Certainly those who spread the message of Godhead are most munificent. So we, it's approved by the gopis. If we want to please them or get their certificate of approval, then we have to give the nectar of Krishna to those who are tapta jivanam, their lives burning, burning in the fire of material existence. There's another analogy for the material world as being an ocean of suffering. Reading from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 28, Text 32. The entire universe is full of miseries, and therefore the inhabitants of this material universe are always shedding tears out of intense grief. There is a great ocean of water made from such tears, but for one who surrenders under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ocean of tears is at once dried up. One need only see the charming smile of the Supreme Lord. In other words, the bereavement of material existence immediately subsides when one sees the charming smile of the Lord we were hearing yesterday, Mukunda Prabhu was <coughs> reminding us that the first effects of even taking up sadhana bhakti. He asked, what is it? Uh, 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 that comes later. Kleshagni Shubhada, that's in sadhana bhakti stage. It's, uh, the miseries are destroyed. And all auspiciousness is bestowed, even in the very beginning. So giving these books means admitting people to the only possibility for them to get free from their suffering. There are so many movements around the world for ameliorating or alleviating suffering. The most popular one at the moment in this part of the world is Palestine. <coughs> okay, so if, if all of a sudden the Israelis and the Palestinians decide to be friends, still they have to suffer, birth, death, old age and disease. So many ways they have to suffer. They must suffer. <coughs> I was just reading yesterday, Srila Prabhupada said that genocide is just, it's just part of, it's just, every, every, every power does it. He, he said the, the Europeans who came to America did a genocide of the Native Americans, as they call them now, and, and here and in Latin America also. He was talking about the Holocaust, how there's a big fuss made about that, but and Prabhupada said, it's, it's, not, it's politics. People perceive others as being a threat or whatever, and they do it. He mentioned about Churchill manufactured an artificial famine in India which killed millions. <coughs> there are so many. In Kampuchea there was. In India, we don't hear much about that. In Kerala specifically. Well, Bengal was the famines, but there was a genocide. Actually, I wouldn't call it a genocide because it didn't last that long, but there were about... Rwanda, Rwanda Kampuchea, I said, yeah. But, but, but this uh, 
we were talking about Mahatma Gandhi the other day, but when the, when the, in Kerala there was a slaughter of Hindus by the religion of peace people. And, uh, sorry. But you don't hear much about it because the Indian government edited that out. And Gandhi said, don't make an issue of it because he thought he needed the help of the Muslim League to get independence. And they did get the independence, but then they split. Anyway, it just goes on. It's nothing new. It's, a, it's not good. It's a very gross manifestation of the suffering in this world. So much suffering. One, is, one inspiration you get from book distribution is meeting the people and they're suffering so much. That I used to experience in the 1970s in England and it's only got worse. <coughs> to be a drug addict is just normal now in America. And there are all kinds of other addictions, right? There's gambling addiction, games addiction. People stay up all night playing games and uh, pornography addiction. So many, so many people, they just, they can't find any happiness in their day-to-day -day life. They're so much lacking any, any love, even on the material platform, that they, they just take shelter of intoxication, gambling, shopping. People go on sh shopping binges to try and forget what they're doing. So much suffering. Tapyante loka tapena sadhava praya shojanaha paramaradhanam tadhi purushasya kilatmanaha. Lord Shiva, the topmost Vaishnav, says that great personalities almost always accept voluntary suffering because of the suffering of the people in general. This is considered the highest method of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is present in everyone's heart. <laughs> highest method to accept suffering. On to, to try to alleviate others' suffering. The gopis became Goswamis. Right? Hare Krishna. Uh, and what did they do? Tyaktva turna mashesha mandala pati shrening sada tuchavat budva dina ganesha ko karunaya kopina kanta shrito. Living very comfortably, left it all to live an austere life <coughs> with nothing, just smallest of cloth to cover their body and a Patchwork quilt for the winter. The the the, uh, the renunciants they have actually three kurs: Kopin, uh, Kanta, and Kamandalu. And that's it for the so renounced. But Gopi Bhava Samrita Dilahari, Kalola Magnor Maho. They're always diving and surfacing in the ocean of the bliss of Gopi Prem. But what were they doing? Well, they were doing various things. They were calling out in Vrindavan, Hey Radhe, Raja Tevike. But what they did for us here now today, Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipuno Sadharma Samstapako Lokanam Hita. Ah, the, they were studying the books finding out all the references, making books for the benefit of the people of the world. Uh, what were they doing? They were just sitting in Vrindavan in a few hundred years ago and writing on some, some leaves. <coughs> ah, Loka Nam. Yeah. But they were thinking, this is not meant just for us. 
it gives an idea that they had a vision of the few people. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Preeti Vite Ache Jata Nagaradi Gram. They had an idea of that, that it's going to spread. And what they gave in their books, Srila Prabhupada gives in his books, he said, by reading my books, you contact all the previous Acharyas. Do you, do you remember that? I remember, I, I couldn't find it any, but um, I remember in a BBT newsletter that Rameshra used to put out, this was in the 1970s, and quoted Prabhupada as saying that, by reading my books, you contact all the previous Acharyas, which makes sense. Because all the previous Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada consulted 13 commentaries on Bhagavatam before composing his commentaries. And uh, the 12 commentaries in Sanskrit and one in Bengali by his own Guru Maharaj. <coughs> and yeah, it's all the, all the essence of the previous Acharyas, Vyasadeva, and then all the previous Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada is uh, Sarvadeva Maya Guru, who he's a representative of all the godly people, all the previous Acharyas. So you get it all. And there's someone just wandering around on the streets in Atlanta and they get it. And there's the six Goswamis, the gopis, came and gave that. And it, it's given to them. We don't know. They did. They certainly don't know. But we ourselves don't. We can't imagine what a big gift we're giving them. We don't know. If anyone asks what you're doing on Sankirtan, you tell. I don't know. I know it's too big for me to understand. Just I. I, I know it's good, but, but to explain it fully, it's not possible. It. It's too. It's too big for us to properly understand. <coughs> so you're all coming here to bless us. You're all great souls. Burida, most magnanimous, the gopis say. Uh, so that is this, that's a, a very good sign for us here because like attracts like. And the fact that you are coming is, uh, is a great blessing. You're coming because of Krishna life. There's there's life here. Prana Cheja She Hetu Pracha. It's uh we we hope you had comfortable sleeping arrangements, but you didn't come here for comfortable sleeping arrangements. That you can you can imagine you can get that anywhere. <coughs> of course some people can't. They're suffering so much they can't even lie down. Their their body is so much racked with pain. That's why you have to distribute books. But uh, you came here because there's life, there's energy, shakti, power. <laughs> Preaching means we have to get Krishna's mercy, Krishna's shakti. Kali kale dharma krishna nama sankirtan. Krishna shakti bina nahe ta pravartan. Without Krishna's mercy, it's not possible to execute the yoga dharma of Sankirtan. Spread. Sankirtan means chanting and especially the definition that Srila Prabhupada gave us, the expanded definition of bringing it to others. <coughs> that energy comes, that power comes, we become empowered by admitting our powerlessness. Krishna is very powerful. Just like Prahlad we were hearing yesterday, he didn't attempt to defend himself. He didn't need to, if Krishna is protecting. What could he do against Hiranyakashipu? But Krishna ultimately protected. So what can we do against this demoniac society? But Krishna can do anything. We have to pray for the mercy. Pray. Praying means with humility. It's possible to pray with pride also. <clears throat> Make a big show. The story is there. One of the 
parables that Jesus told of the the Pharisees and the widow. The Pharisees are like the official priests, and they make a big show of doing, saying their prayers in a very ostentatious way. But there's one widow who had just a tiny little bit of my no one cares for her and she she gave that in the temple whatever she had and Jesus said that God is more pleased with her what she gave than with all these big pompous prayers of the Pharisees and like you could say the smarter Brahmanas something like that they get a bad rap from Jesus again and again <clears throat> They were the official religionists. And Jesus came to give the, the real thing. But they didn't want it. So we get energy by praying from conviction. We heard that Balabhadra Prabhu was emphasizing that point. That in sales, whether you're selling insurance or you're selling Srila Prabhupada's books, the only real insurance that there is. Uh, <coughs> you have to be convinced. You have to be more convinced. And others are convinced they don't want it. And you have to be convinced that they need it. You do need it. You do want it. And that conviction that transmits to others that conviction comes from reading the books. When you read, you think, others should read this also. Others should, why should it be me only? Conviction, strength, shakti, energy comes from sadhana, practice, following the rules and regulations. How many times did Srila Prabhupada stress in his letters? Dozens of times. You have to follow the rules and regulations, rise early, chant your rounds. <clears throat> Book distribution itself, preaching is a form of sadhana, as we heard that quote Brigupati Prabhu brought up from Srila Prabhupada. We have to apply ourselves to that sadhana, and then by doing the book distribution, it's a spiral. We get more taste for hearing and chanting. As we heard from Brigupati Prabhu, we can see he's enjoying Krishna consciousness. What does that Srila Prabhupada write at the end of the Bhagavad Gita commentary? Enjoying bliss at every moment. Thrill, thrill at every moment. Yeah. Sanjay, Sanjay says. And uh, I'm feeling a thrill at every moment. And Srila Prabhupada says, this is, this is the natural symptom of an enlightened person. Then we get taste for chanting, for hearing, uh, for, for, and for distributing that. Following the regulated principles, how does that give taste? Well, the regulated they are positive and negative injunctions, right? Vidhi, this should be done, and nisheda, this should not be done. The two, two kinds of regulated principles. So do this. Regularly hear Bhagavatam. Regularly chant the holy names. Regularly take Krishna prasadam. And don't associate with non-devotees. Don't eat food not offered to Krishna. If we, if we follow, we'll get strength. It's a, it's a simple thing. We want to be healthy, then there are certain things we should do. We should physically healthy. We have to exercise regularly and take nutritious food, not overeat, not undereat. If, we, if there's a choice, better to undereat a little rather than, <laughs> rather than overeat from the health point of view. Looking a little perplexed there. Huh? Gujarati, what can you expect? <laughs> Making a racial joke here. So he's a Gujarati, what do you expect when it comes to eating? <laughs> Uh, expert in eating good food, very good food, vegetarian, all vegetarian. Better art offer it to Krishna. So the, the, there are things which give us strength, and there are things which 
sap our strength if we're going to watch calmy movies, have illicit sex. So we're not going to get the energy to face the the energy, the material energy. What are we going? What are we doing? Going out to meet people. They are fully enlivened or imp empowered with what energy they have. It's all material energy. And they have their conviction. They're not philosophers. It's not very well formulated in their minds. But their basic idea is get money and enjoy. So we have to declare war. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada said in a talk he gave in 1967, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared war against Maya by spreading Krishna consciousness. And the commanders in chief are Rup and Sanatan. In other words, if anyone wants to be expert in Krishna consciousness to fight with Maya, they must follow the principles of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. And again, these are the gopis. And they came and they, they showed us how to live blissfully in Krishna consciousness by their example. But they also gave us the rules to do so. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally instructed Sanatana Goswami, you give, give all these rules. Rules are tools, I've sometimes heard, as if it's well, we need tools. We have to climb a mountain. We need tools. If you're on top of the mountain, you don't need. You're already there. But if we're not, we need help to go up. <coughs> go up and go up. Yeah, we're always going up, going up. I see the devotees, they're jumping up. There'll come a day when you jump up and you'll just, it's okay, it's time to go. And go, keep on going all the way up. <laughs> Break through. Go through the heavenly planets and go right through the coverings of the universe and go right up to Krishna. <laughs> Sankita and Krishna will come and take you. It's all auspicious. Shubhada, all auspicious. You can be sure by doing this, you're getting the mercy. It's all auspicious. We can see where, wherever Sankirtan is performed, everything becomes auspicious. It becomes alive, flourishing. We have Krishna life. And we can see where there, there's no mood of Sankirtan. Just, okay, we got it. we're getting enough donations. And uh, so, okay, pay some, we can pay someone to be a pujari and pay someone to be a cook. You can't pay someone to be a book distributor. But we don't need book to, but we don't need to pay anyone to be. What do we need book distributors for? We don't need book distributors, and even the pujaris, we can ask Elon Musk to make us a robot, and then we don't need to pay pujaris either. <laughs> what do you? There is already common in Indian temples, right? They have the the the, the music machine they put on at the arati and. It, plays the drum and bangs the cymbals. And what do you need anyone to come to the... All you need is to give some donation and you live happily. That wasn't what Srila Prabhupada came from the spiritual world for. He, did, he condemned that. He's just keeping the deities and making donation, getting donations. Where there's no mood of Sankirtan, there's no life of Sankirtan, we find that those temples, they're full of politics, problems, because it becomes, it becomes material. I, you're getting money for doing nothing. Hey, I, I'm, I'm entitled to a, some of that. And you shouldn't be the president. I should be the president, and then I'll get the money <laughs> or whatever. I'm, I'm not down on, I know it's not easy to be a president. But those who do book distribution, they practically experience how it gives you life and energy and you experience a thrill at every moment. And it's fun. Festival. Festival, it's always a festival. <coughs> so uh, the temples who have a 
mood of book distribution. The, the, the temple must be full of life and enthusiasm. We have so many problems in our temples. What is the solution? Okay, let's all come together and talk and try and work it out. Just send everyone out on Sankirtan. <laughs> practical, practical, yeah. And there'll still be some this, this, that, that. There'll still be some disagreements. It's even there in the spiritual world. Not in Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, once you've heard about Vrindavan, Vaikuntha sounds a little boring. You go to Vrindavan, like I was saying about the gopis yesterday, you see they're, they're in public they're smiling nicely with Krishna, but when the curtain closes, they're getting on his case. <laughs> because that's what the gopis do. And Krishna loves that. He likes it better. He likes to be taunted by his loving girlfriends more than praised by the Vedic hymns. So there will be there will be some, some kind of friction. But it should be that energy channeling it to getting the books out, having festivals, chanting in public, distributing prasadam. <coughs> it's a great battle and, and Srila Prabhupada he mentioned that the two great histories of India, there are two great battles. One is Ram and Ravana, and the other is the Kurukshetra battle. <laughs> and we, yeah, that's that's the histories, the itihasas, Ramayana and Mahab Mahabharata. So it's a battle. It's a battle with the minds of others. You have to convince others whose mind immediately tells them whatever this is doesn't seem like it's going to be something that's going to enhance my sense gratification. So <laughs> you have to overpower them. Overpower and uh, convince them it's something good for them. And as we heard from Mrigendra Prabhu, you you have to come to some kind of make make them feel like it's something that will something that they want, depending on their mentality. But we have to be strong minded. Here book distributors chanting Japa, it's intense. Without crying helplessly to Krishna for strength, for help, we can't do it, not for long. It's only by becoming an instrument, as Arjuna became an instrument, let Krishna take us over. And every, every Buddhist has this experience. As soon as you think you're doing it, you can't do anything. As soon as you surrender to Krishna and stop thinking I'm doing it, then Krishna works through you. <coughs> Who are we distributing books to? It's not... Uh, Vyasadeva, Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages of Naimish Aranya. <laughs> different kind of audience. <laughs> we may consider, is it really a good idea to give books to these people? Aren't these people, <laughs> aren't these people just too stupid and too crazy? to even understand this? Seems like that. But then, see who Prabhupada preached to. Actually, he, he wanted to preach to the intelligentsia. We can understand that from his early writings. And, and throughout, he wanted to, to meet the intelligentsia. But practically, he worked with the, the dregs of society. Well, not completely the dregs. There were the, there were the bums on the Bowery. He didn't try to preach to them. But the, the hippies, they didn't seem like good candidates 
for anything, for anything useful, anything meaningful. But Srila Prabhupada, he saw a spark. He saw they, they had some enthusiasm, they liked to join the kirtan, they liked prasad, and some of them listened to what he had to say. Otherwise, the idea of spreading an ancient Indian tradition in contemporary America seems rather illogical. Why even Indians aren't interested in their ancient culture? So what to speak of Americans? And and if you're going to spread it at all, maybe you should do some dance shows and uh, maybe some have some cooking demonstrations. But distributing these books and people open them and there's all this funny writing which they oh, haven't got a clue what it is. And and it has stories of Indra and and. What's it got to do with me? It doesn't seem to make sense to distribute these books. Srila Prabhupada said in this regard, although he always spoke against blind following, but he said in this regard, book production and book distribution, he said, I follow blindly my Guru Maharaj. He wanted this. On this matter, Prabhupada said, I follow blindly. We hear it said that, well, let's be realistic. Book distribution isn't working. We've distributed so many books. We don't see that the world's changing. People aren't becoming Krishna consciousness. They're not becoming Krishna conscious. Uh, that is arguable. But apart from that, to deny book distribution, the importance of book distribution, it practically means to deny... Srila Prabhupada and his divinity, because he put so much emphasis on this. He, uh, he said that Krishna wants this. So it's like denying Srila Prabhupada, that we know son, what to do better than Srila Prabhupada. When Srila Prabhupada came to Boston and he saw the first press that Iskon had, he offered full obeisances. And he, he said, Jayam Vishnupad, he said his guru's name. He saw, this is at last, this is my guru's work. This is what he wanted more than anything. Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur had the, had the press installed right in front of the deities in the Bhagbazar temple. Noisy, clanky, ugly looking thing. He had it, there's the Goryamat logo where it shows... Uh, on one side, there is Lakshmi Narayana. This is the Vidhi Marga, Lakshmi Narayana. Paraphernalia for offering arti. This is the Pancharatrik Mark. And on the other side, Raga Mark, there's Radha Krishna, Madanga Cartels, and a printing press in the logo. And everything's traditional, but the printing press is something modern. He saw it as the Raga Marga, the, the path of spontaneous service. We may say, well, book distribution was for the past. We, we, let's adjust now and do something different. In this regard, Srila Prabhupada wrote in a letter in 1973, you have taken the right view of the importance of my books. Books will always remain. That was the view of my Guru Maharaja and I also have taken it. Therefore I started my movement with my books. When Prabhupada had his books, three cantos, three volumes, the first canto, then he went to America. I started my movement with my books and we shall be able to maintain everything with the sales of the books. The temples will be maintained by the book sales and if there are no more temples, then the book shall remain. It does work. Counterintuitively. If we went to some business advisory company or management company and asked them, well, how do you think we could spread this? They'd never say you distribute. You get some translations of some ancient Sanskrit works and distribute them to the public. They never think of such a thing. 
it's they can't because it's a transcendental idea. Srila Prabhupada said, I've hatched this transcendental plot. <laughs> we we uh, print books, sell, get money, print more books. Go on like that. Yeah, there are many new ideas to spread Krishna consciousness. New ideas. Most of them are useless or worse. <laughs> if we don't have implicit faith in what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave and what we're receiving through the Guru Parampara, then we have to water things down. And then we turn Krishna consciousness into a religion. It's ringing the bell. Or having a machine to ring the bell. Have a religion and show the deities and people come, give some money and that's it. <clears throat> Sometimes there are new books made which without all the Sanskrit and without all the heavy message and just trying to present Krishna consciousness without Krishna consciousness. Something, I, I, I can't really understand it. I, I, I can't understand how we can think that there's a better way to present Krishna consciousness than presenting Krishna consciousness. If, if we try to change it and put it in a different language. Of course, there, there is room for that also, just like Srila Prabhupada said. He set up the BI for preaching to scientists. And they're a very tough field. So you have to present things in a certain way and bring them to the point of them being able to hear the Bhagavatam message. So there is... There is scope for that in certain tough fields. But for, for generally presenting Krishna consciousness, we have what Krishna gave, Bhagavad Gita. We have what Krishna gave specifically for this Kali Yoga. Krishna is Swadhamo Pagate Dharma Jnana Adibisa Kalo Nashtra Drishamesha Purana Kudono Dita. People who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in this Kali Yoga will get light from this Bhagavad Purana. So we have to distribute books. And books means Prabhupada's books. And books that have the same message. And there may be facets of that message also, just like I'm recommending this coming back book. It puts all the teachings about reincarnation in one, in one spot. And we were discussing yesterday about that nature's IQ and books like this, which, which make a strong case for God consciousness. These are very good books for intelligentsia anywhere. <clears throat> that it's, it's very hard to deny the reality of the higher in, higher intelligence, spiritual intelligence. <clears throat> but I books that are just so much roundabout that at the end of the book you're not any closer than when you started, and you're more. You know, I think most of our generation had this experience before having the, the mercy of coming to Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. We read so many books on quote-unquote Indian or Eastern spirituality that left you more confused than when you started. And you, you, you read through the book and you don't know where you're going or what you're... <laughs> huh? Krishna Murthy was the champion of that, right? Don't read books. It's right there in his book. <laughs> But we get inspiration to distribute books from the books. How can you get inspiration from books that you, if you, you can't be confident that if you give them to people that they're actually going to become Krishna conscious? <clears throat> so as Srila Prabhupada said, the books shall remain and whatever goes on it, it is a crazy world, no doubt.
We used to think it was bad in the 1970s. But according to the uh, Shastra, it should get worse every day. <laughs> and that's actually happening day by day. What is that verse? Tatas chanu dinam dharma satyam socham shamadaya kalena balena rajan nangshantayu balam smritihi. Day by day in Kali Yoga, everything gets worse. Dharma decreases, uh, truthfulness decreases, cleanliness and purity decreases, satyam tolerance decreases, mercy decreases. Uh, then lifespan decreases, mental power decreases, everything decreases. It's getting worse and worse and worse. <coughs> but as long as the books are going out, there's still hope. And people are coming. And Srila Prabhupada also writes in the uh, fourth canto that we should perform Sankirtan Yagyas in, throughout the world. This will create auspiciousness, imperceptible auspiciousness. So we may say, well, we don't see people becoming Krishna conscious, but it, is, it may be imperceptible auspiciousness. <laughs> we have to also, we're having a Sankirtan festival here. but We want to make that situation where there can be Sankirtan festival going on all the time, just like this. These temples are meant for Sankirtan festival. Uh, but we cannot expect many to come and live in the temple. with the, It's rigid, disciplined life. There's a sign there saying monastery. So monastery means it's, it's a rigid, disciplined life and we can't expect everyone to join that. Most people are going to be Grihastas. <coughs> and then we need communities, farms, Varnashram. This book distribution is going on, one hand clapping. We need, Prabhupada said, 50% of my work not done, which if you think what he did, I think that's maybe why most of our movements retreated from the very idea of Varnashram, because it's such a big thing to, to do, even to try to understand it. But this is stage two. Book distribution gives the idea, and there are a few who are supposed to, in the, in the monasteries, in the temples, who are supposed to live and show that ideal. But Varnashram Dharma stage two gives practical shape, showing how Everything that Srila Prabhupada said is a fact. And this is how people should live their lives. It's not, it's not meant only for a few people in an ashram. It's meant for everyone. Not everyone may be at the stage of fully living a monastic life, but at, in the Varnashram communities at least we can come to the... Everyone can at least be at the stage of yat karoshi, yad ashnasi, yad juhoshi, dadasi, yad yat tepasisi, kontea, tat karushvam adarpanam. Doing everything and offering everything to Krishna. <coughs> so that is required, giving everyone a chance to engage in what the books describe, uh, having brahmanas, kshatriyas, vaishas, and shudras, cows, family life. I don't think people growing up nowadays, they can even envisage what anything like we might call a sane family life is. Because it's been so much encroached upon by other ideas of what family means. And that, that's the basis of civilization. Srila Prabhupada wanted to change the course of the civilization from its disaster course. And civilization, the, the building block is the family. So, 
building that, developing that. There's so so many things. Even in India, there's, 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 it's eroding. Uh, still, we we find most marriages don't end in divorce, but it's also very very common now that the the uh, the girls don't when they get married they, they they don't they won't take their their husband's parents and look after them in old age they specifically won't do it so that becomes very sinful and then the whole structure gets broken down and then the old people they, they all when you're raising the children you also you just see it as uh, the, what's in it for me that's the whole basis of modern society, right? What's in it for me? In raising children, they look cute when they're young, but you just, when they get a little older, they like, get out of here. <laughs> and you, you're not going to look after me. What, what, do I get? what am I doing looking after you? That's the, they won't say it maybe, but that's the mentality. The mentality of the I, me and mine society. So festival means we all come together and celebrate together. Uh, <coughs> but festivals should be going on eternally and it should congeal or coagulate into a community. Community where we have festival all the time. And we, we, festival means we all cooperate together and synergy is produced by which we all become very happy. And, but festival means it starts and it stops. But we have to make a community. And that's great challenge. Book distribution, great challenge. And then bringing to the next stage. Let's think about that also. As I said at the beginning of this short festival, the, the practical effect of this festival will be if book distribution increases, more devotees become inspired to take it up, and solidifies the resolve of those who are already doing. So, may the waves of this Anandam Buddhi, this ocean of bliss, may it spread. May others also uh, come swim in this ocean and bring back, just like you go to the Ganga and you bring, or Radha Kund, and we bring back bottles. So people are coming, let them take it back to their places and replicate this. Already that's, it's having its effect worldwide. Just the idea of selling books in stacks, that's gone worldwide now. Otherwise devotees were selling one by one but now it's become common at least a few books at a time. And the idea of set distribution is entering the ISKCON psyche. Hare Krishna. That's all I have to say for now. There's a hand up. There's another hand up. There's another hand up. All right, we go to the most venerable hand first of all. So I have one comment. Thank you so much for the two most important things, you know, Sankirtan book distribution especially and Varnashram, which we're not talking about enough, <laughs> except for you, Maharaj. Thank you. It's not only me, Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, Shivaram Maharaj. Yes, you're right. And that's about it, at least, at least among the big shot level. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for your class. Um, you said that after book distribution, we feel an increase in taste for hearing and chanting, but sometimes we observe that devotees get burnt out yeah. after doing book distribution. And um, I experienced that a lot. So my service in London is to encourage and inspire the youth and congregation to do Sankirtan. So my question is twofold. How can we prevent burnout and how to keep people inspired to stick with the service and not leave it? Ah, that's a, that's a big question. A burnout means uh, they have to be prepared, first of all. You, then there needs training and preparation for soldiers, right? You don't just stick a gun in their hand and they don't even 
know which way to hold it and they shoot and they kill themselves. <laughs> As I, I was just thinking actually yesterday that the, a gun is such a dangerous thing. With a bow and arrow you have, you have to have a little technique to know how to use it. With a gun you don't need to know much technique, do you? It's very easy to use and very deadly. Uh, <coughs> but some training is needed and then uh, you, you have to be fit enough to go out into battle. So if we take devotees who are not properly prepared, trained, we can take them out, but uh, <coughs> they're more likely to burn out. Everyone will feel at some time, even regular book distributors, they need a break. It may be for half an hour to do some extra reading. They may need to take... A, well, that should be there regularly also. Devotees get a chance to come. Not just say they're out there every day, all day. There may be some who, who come to that level. But uh, we need to have a, a regular spiritual food without that. We, we can't expect to take devotees who are just, uh, who their, their basic approach to Krishna consciousness is, okay, let me chant Hare Krishna, and I'm also aspiring to get ahead in material life. We can't, ex which is a lot of the uh, kind of preaching that goes on nowadays in the broader ISKCON, is that do well in this material world, and that will be preaching. I don't see how it's preaching, it just by getting ahead. But maybe it's it's seen as some. But it's encouraging people in their materialistic propensities and their material ambitions, and then to to expect them to be able to fight against Maya in the form of book distribution. That's that's uh, they're not going to have the strength to do it. It requires elite troops those who are thoroughly convinced that what's in Srila Prabhupada's books needs to be communicated to others. We have to fully believe what's in Prabhupada's books. And a, and a lot of the preaching nowadays seems to be to try to uh, avoid what's in Prabhupada's books. That's another whole topic. So we have to finish. Your question went unanswered. But anyway, you'll get the answer out on the street. <laughs> so we're finished here. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Vancha kalpa thirupya shakripa sindhu vya tachapadita anam pavadebhyo vaishnavebhyo